Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read a scripture. Some scripture to us in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41 and 44. Talking about offering, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in the large amounts. But they, they come, this poor lady. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents, calling to his disciples. Jesus always teaching and coaching the people. He is a wonderful coacher. He is a wonderful teacher. He shows people all the way of the disciples' lives. He tells them what to do. He tells them what not to do. He tells them example of this, example of that. He called him, he calling his disciples to him. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury. She only put two pieces of small copper coins. But Jesus said she put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty. All she have, she gave it to Jesus. Put in everything all she had to live on. Her life is not depend on that money, on that coins. All she has. She said she give it, invest it into the kingdom of God. I believe every one of us, this is, is similar to our faith as well. Faith in God. Believe in God. We tell the world, we tell the demons and evil spirits that we are not going to depend on anything else. And our wealth and our everything, but we are going to depend on the Lord our God. We're going to trust in our God, no matter what. I see the Lord's hands always provide. Amen? You see that experience before? Yes? Yep. Okay. I'm going to share with you a little bit about the mission year at New Life Fellowship. At New Life Fellowship, we are trusted by God to plant a church in the city of Phnom Penh. And we believe this vision that was given to new life through God, it's wonderful. When I first heard it, you know, kind of see it's too big. The vision is too big. It's too difficult. For us, it's too difficult. But for God, all are possible. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. I'm going to read from New American Standard uh, Bible. Maybe it's in there as well. Yep. To me, Paul said, the very least of all saints, the very least of all saints, this grace was given. Like the grace of God was given to every one of us, like no one left behind. No one left behind. Young people, old people, new believers, old believers, all was given, all was given to preach to the Gentiles. God gave this gospel to us and to preach this gospel, to continue keep preaching to all people, the Gentiles, the unbelievers, the people never, ever heard the gospel before. This is the very purpose of God. To bring the gospel. Come on. Keep bringing the gospel. Share the gospel with others. This is what New Life Fellowship 
have been doing. To preach to the Gentiles the unfordable riches of Christ. And to bring to light, to bring to light what is in administration of the mystery. Of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God. For ages, the gospel has been hidden. It's in God who created all things. This gospel is in God. It's from God. It's through God. He is the one that created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known. Wow. Now, this manifold wisdom of God might be made known. Might now made known through the church. God uses His church to bring the gospel to the people that never ever heard about Him, about His plan of salvation. In whom, um, um, where was I? But uh, to the uh, uh, through the church, to the rulers and their authorities in the heavenly places. These words in accordance with their eternal purpose. God have a purpose eternally, which He carry out in Christ Jesus. Our Lord, He has the very purpose, His purpose for people to have relationship with the Lord God that have created them, have created the world. This God has the wonderful plan for people all over the world. Through Christ Jesus, in whom we have boldness in Him. We have boldness and confidence access through faith in Him. We are bold. We are bold through Christ Jesus and confidence. When we have confidence, we are bold and we share the gospel of the living God to the Gentiles, to the people that they never ever heard the gospel before. This gospel is the power of the living God. This gospel is a gospel can restore people's life. This gospel is a gospel can heal six people, can raise the dead. This gospel, it was hidden before, but now it's not hidden anymore because the Lord God uses you and I that believe in the Lord God to bring this gospel forward to the people that they never, ever heard the gospel before. There is a story that I experienced, you know, in life. There is a pastor in the village. You know, pastors sometimes need other people to help as well. It's like I in shop and I in. This one pastor was sick. He's tired all the time. This one day, he go visited the doctor and see the doctor. And they do the x-ray on his lungs and liver. And the doctor told him, all over your liver, there's the bumps all over the livers. And the pastor was so sad. He come to the church. You know, he, his church is in the province. He come to the church, you know, that, that day. And I saw him out there in the foyer. And I talked to him. And he told me the story. And I was sad when I heard it. His liver got bumps all over. I thought there must be cancer. I was a little sad. And later on he told me that your, your dry face made me worried. <laughs> he said that your plain face made me worried. But I said, let's trust in the Lord God. If you die, you go to heaven. Don't worry about it. Make a long story short, we prayed, and he's okay. And later on, 
he go back to the province. And we pray almost weekly. We pray for him. He said every single day, he don't know where he get the strength from. He's so strong. He said, I'm normal. The doctor said, it's not good. The sign is not good. Maybe you can't live that long. That is really sad, you know, to hear somebody tell you that. I tell you one year later, two years later, three years later, five years later, the pastor is still alive. He's still strong. I asked him, can you go see the doctor? He said, nope, I'm not going to see the doctor again. They're going to give me a bad report. I'm going to trust in the Lord my God. He is trusting in the Lord his God. He said, if he die, he die. It's okay. And now he carry on the testimony that the Lord God healing him. This is just one small thing that the Lord God have done. If you collect, gather all the people, all the believers, listen to them. I, you will hear a lot, of sign, a lot of signs and wonders that the Lord God have done. So this is God. This is Jesus before it was hidden, before the pastor never got saved, and he was hopeless. He thought he's going to die soon. He's young, but he got some issue in his life, in his body. But as a pastor, learn the word of God. As a pastor, learn the word of God. The pastor get to access into the power of God. The pastor get to receive the power of God. And the pastor have a story to share with his community about how great God is. This is Christ. He revealed his power through his church, through you and I. He trusts us to bring this gospel to the people around us. Pastor Jason have, uh, Jason have shared the church. The church means ecclesia. Ecclesia is gathering of, this, of citizens called out from their home into some public places. Ecclesia. God called people out of their home to the public places. Call out of their comfort zone. Call out of their, 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 their shy place. Call out. Come on, you go out. Be with the people. Help the people. Meet together. Build one another up. Iron, sharpen iron. Come on. Don't hide. Don't stay in your place. Just go out and be with the other people. This is church. Get out of the normality. Go into the public place. And help one another and build one another. This is church. So far, the church is a place where we evangelize. We tell people about Jesus. We preach the gospel. And then we plant church. When we plant church, church have babies, right? Church have believers. More believers, and it's time for us to plan more churches. This is what we do, what we did at New Life Fellowship. In 1994, we planned this New Life Fellowship in Cambodia, in Phnom Penh. In 1999, we planned first New Life Fellowship out of Phnom Penh in the village called uh, Nyao in Tramaja in Santuk district, Kampung Thom province. And in 2021, this year, New Life Fellowship have reached more than 300 churches. Give glory to God, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Could you show the map of uh, Cambodia? Uh, see all of those those dot with uh, New Life logos in it. New Life Fellowship have planned 300 plus churches in 15 
provinces and cities. There are so much more that we need to do more. We plant a church in Phnom Penh, and then plant a church in Kampung Thom. We plant a church in Kampung Spu, and we plant a church in Dachau. And now it's keep going further more and more. And we have more places that is available for us to plan more churches. At New Life Fellowship, we always focus on reaching out. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, church. Come on, everyone. Let's preach the gospel. Let's bring the gospel to the people that never, ever heard the gospel before so that they may experience the loving kindness of God, that they may have a relationship with God, they may receive healing from God. This is what we did. So far, so good. Now we get more people through that. And this year, we want to focus on the mission. We want to expand the loving kindness just beyond the city to the provinces. You, my brothers and sisters, we want you to involve in this mission as well. Let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. So our church is unique. Our goal is to have the building like that, but we cannot. Sometimes we cannot. The church, we meet in, you know, under the tree like that, you know. People sit, you know, have a tarp, sit under the tree and preach the gospel and study the Bible and learn about God. Some church, they meet under the tent. Some churches, they meet in the home. Some churches, they meet in the buildings. But all called churches. They are coming out of their home to go meet each other at one place and study the Bible together and grow in God all together. So this year, we focus on strengthening these churches even more. These people, they don't just have the church there. Even though they meet under the tree, even though they meet under the tent, even though they meet in their home, they meet in their building. These people, they are reaching out to the community around them as well. If you are to go and join these churches and listen to the story of the, the pastors, they have a lot of great stories. Some of them even see people raise the dead to life. That is powerful. So this year, you're going to hear a lot of miracles as well. And you can do it as well. Out there, people, you know, people trust the Lord more than anything else. I want to tell you another story. This one time, me and a medical team, going, uh, we, we go to this lady's house in Kampung Tom. The lady was old. And her back is bending like that. She come, you know, to us to pray, get prayed for. And we pray for the lady. God healed that lady. And another lady climbed the stair and asked us for the medicine. That lady said, oh, another lady came in and said, please give us the medicine. But the lady that just healed by the Lord said, don't ask them for the medicine. Ask them to pray for you. <laughs> Can you imagine? No need to ask them for medicine. Ask them to pray for you. You see, they, they share right away. They testify right away. Because the power of God is at hand. It's right there. So, we encourage you to go with our team this year. Sign. Sign in, you know. Register to go visit these places. For now, we have two places to go to. Um... Do you have the picture of that place? Tasu Church. And slide, another slide. One more slide. 
It's coming. We're going to go to uh, Tasu Church. That church is, uh, if you're familiar with uh, 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 the Kao, it's on the way to the Kao. And, in, in, uh, you get to some Rang Yang, and when you reach some Rang Yang, you turn right, which is approximately, let's say, one hour something from Phnom Penh. Yeah. So uh, down there is Tasu Church. They said Tasu, actually, it's Tasu. Tasu Church. It's in uh, the Kai province, and uh, the pastor was transformed by God as well. Before he got saved, he was not a good guy. Rebellion against his, his family, gambling and stuff like that. But Tasu village, after, uh, you know, it was, then was a village that had a lot of witchcraft. A lot of people practice witchcraft in that village. After we plant a church, not many witchcraft left anymore. Not many witchcraft left. And the police in that area, they asked me, what did you do to these teenagers? They used to be bad people. They used to be bad kids. They're not good. We try to discipline them. They don't listen to us police. But what have you done to these kids? Now they behave so well. You see, they behave so well because the gospel of the living God start to come in and transform from the inside out. And the pastor witnessed it himself. He is a pastor. He's a leader because of the power of God. So we would like to go there and help strengthen that church as well. And the other church is uh, called Kronyung. Um, do you see the picture of Kronyung Church? Uh, another picture? Kronyung is have led by a, a pastor lady. Yeah, it, Kronyung is up there. Kronyung is up there with a big tree and a red roof. This lady used to be, I think I shared with you once, this lady used to be a cleaner in Phnom Penh. She cleaned and she get money for living. But after a while, and then later on she got saved. She got saved and she saved some money and she bought a piece of land up there. After she bought a piece of land, she thought about it. Oh, why don't I start a church? She never been to Bible college. She never, you know, get a proper training. But her heart is there. She's a small lady. She's small, never been married. She loves Jesus. She trusts in Jesus. The money that she have, she get a piece of land. And later on, she trusts God. And the Lord God provide her with the building. She meet under that tree. And later on, God provided her with the building. And somebody came in, oh, you, uh, you, mu you must have worked so hard. Let me help you. So this lady, she, she, you know, she's getting, I think she's older than me, maybe uh, four or five years. I am 48. Maybe she in her 50-something. And uh, this lady, never been married, no kids. But all the kids in the community call her mom. Call her mom. They trust her. They trust her to lead them. Teenager go to school. They pass high school. They come to Phnom Penh. They study and they get a degree. You know, they get a job on, in Phnom Penh on Sunday. And Saturday and Sunday, they go back and help her. Lead worship. Lead cell group. And do different, different, uh, uh, different uh, projects there. Because this lady have Jesus. And Jesus is the center of the community. She never been married. She's not educated. But Jesus transforms her life. Jesus help her. And she get to help others. Therefore, the whole community, the, the, whole, the kids, kid in the whole community call her mom, 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 mom. And she raised a lot of kids. 
This is New Life Fellowship. We want to see this. This year, is there a form up there? Registration form. We would like to invite you to go to these places. Maybe a trip take only one day. You go and you come back the same day. Maybe the trip, it uh, take like one night, two days. Maybe the trip would take a couple of days. Might have to save some money. I'm going to take some time off from work. Let's go invest with the people that are out there that need more help. I believe we could do this. Right? I believe we can do this. If that lady can do it, we can do it as well. We know God. We have a relationship with God. We can pray for people as well. Could you stand? I would like to pray for us. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, this is the church of the living God. It's not a place, just all oh, a place where people come and worship God a little bit and listen to the preacher and go home. No. We are desiring to see all of those places that we plan these churches, whether under the tree, under the tent, in homes or in a church building. We want to see those places. It's a place that bring a positive influence into their societies. The people over there have get to see lives being transformed already. This year, we want to focus more on that. We, want to, we, we don't want to say, okay, good luck, you do it over there. But this year, I want us to say, yes, let me go. Yes. I'm going to set aside this amount of money. I'm going to go. I'm going to help these people. Yes, I got a motorcycle. I'm going to drive, drive my bike with the team. Yes, I got a car. I'm going to take my car with the team. I'm going to go there. I got some resources. I'm going to go there. I'm going to take a couple days. I'm going to take three days, four days. I'm going to go help. I can do this. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord God. Let God, we are blessed by you, Lord God. Now it's time for us to sow more. Sow more into the lives of the people in these provinces, Lord God. We want to see more lives being transformed, Lord God, by your power, by your word, Lord God. Let God bless your sons and daughters over here. That they, they do work and they do businesses and do this, do that. Lord God, bless them so that they, they, will, they will be increased. Lord God, in their income. Lord God, they have benefits in their businesses so that they, they got time and they got the people so that they can set aside this time to go out and help strengthen these churches as well, Lord God. Let God protect my brothers and sisters, Lord God, let nobody have COVID, Lord God. Lord God, I speak to the germs, to the virus of COVID. You are all dead in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no right in Cambodia. Lord God, I speak to those sick people, to those people that have COVID in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that body cannot take that COVID and that COVID virus need to be dead in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, I lift my brothers and sisters here. If they are sick, Lord God, place your hand upon them, Lord God, and heal them right now, Lord God. And Lord God, this is your word saying, ask anything in my name and I will do it. Lord God, so far, we got to see the loving kindness. Lord God, you, you come in and transform and heal and bless all of these people, Lord God. 
Lord God, continue to do so, Lord God. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, that we are the head, be not the tail, Lord God. We will be the blesser, not the beggars, Lord God. Lord God, thank you so much, Lord God. Bless my brothers and sisters here. And bless those who watch online. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, God bless you. Go out and register to go to the mission field. God bless you.